What is going on, guys? To less credit here, and today we're going to be doing our spoiler review of Spider-Man: Homecoming. Will, how are you doing? What's up, Miller? What's up to you? Nothing. Cool. Spider-Man: Homecoming. I'm more interested to hear Will's thoughts, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to him first. Will, what were your overall thoughts on Spider-Man: Homecoming? It was good. Um, and and. For our listeners, holy shit. <laughs> if you guys are hearing nuclear war in the background, that's, that's fireworks going off right outside. So On July the 8th. Yeah, I think, I think they're over now. <laughs> it was good. I, I liked it. I think that it's, it's being incredibly overhyped, which is kind of like just par from the course. Everything nowadays, it seems like it either has to be the best movie ever or the worst movie ever. Like, people have lost all concept of degrees. And that's kind of annoying. Um, it's definitely not the best MCU movie. It's not even the best solo MCU movie. That still belongs to Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I'm kind of torn as to whether or not I think it's the best Spider-Man movie ever. Spider-Man is something, and this is something that Marvel... Uh, doesn't seem to understand um, is that not every movie can be quippy and uh, you know and jokey but Spider-Man definitely can and that was definitely it, it, the Marvel formula fits Spider-Man really well and it w felt very natural here um, just like it did with Ant-Man um, and I really like Tom Holland uh, I do I do think Tom Holland might be the best Spider-Man we've had yet I do. I, I will. I will say that's that's I'm leaning towards that possibility. And I think I think Spider-Man, as far as the actors have gone, has gotten better every recast. I loved Tobey Maguire's movies, but I was never sold on him as Spider-Man. And then I didn't really care much for the amazing movies, but I loved Andrew Garfield. And I think this fits because we've got a, a good Spider-Man in a good Spider-Man movie. So, there's that. I loved it. This is probably my favorite MCU movie. I will say, Miller, as long as you're comfortable being incorrect, I, I'll, I'll be comfortable with that. <laughs> I can say the same thing about you. Um, okay. Okay. This felt like a reboot, but it didn't feel like they were changing stuff just for the sake of changing stuff. The changes felt natural. The cast really worked together. Tom Holland, I don't know if he's the best spider-man um but he he or mcguire is definitely the best for me michael keaton one of the best mcu villains um yeah. overall and one of the best spider-man villains i was worried about him because he seemed like he was going to be really cliche from the trailer but that was not the case the humor was there but not I mean, I thought some of the humor was a little forced, but it didn't feel forced like it can in other Marvel movies. Doctor Strange, we're looking at you. Um, God. Well, I, 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 I really liked it. Um, I didn't, I didn't love it like uh, Darren Miller did, but Darren's not here. But yeah, he loved it. Um, I didn't love it, but I really liked it. I, I have a lot of problems in it. I have a, a lot of problems with it that I'll get into in a minute, but um, the, the humor is great. It's, it's one of the funniest uh, MCU movies, um, and the humor works for the most part. It never really feels forced, even if the jokes aren't that funny. Um, Tom Holland's great as Spider-Man. He's not my favorite Spider-Man. McGuire is still my favorite Spider-Man. The, the action is, is a lot of fun. The movie is so, so much fun. And um, the characters, the characters, are, they're interesting, they're compelling. They, they got high school right, which mm -hmm. I was, I did not know if that was going to work or not, high school in this movie, because we see, I mean, there's a lot of times in like blockbusters like these where filmmakers just, they don't really understand how high school is now, and they want to, they want to use like past trends and stuff for the, their version of high school or whatever and it doesn't work and it's really awkward and cringy and but high school works in this movie it really does 
And um, yeah, this movie, it's really fun. It's really good. I have problems with it. I'll get into a minute, but Will, what were some of your specific like problems with the movie? Well, as far as the bad goes specifically, I felt the movie was derivative. Um, I felt like a lot of it, a lot of it was very similar to the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. Um, I felt that Michael Keaton's Vulture was kind of the same character as Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. And, and that's not to take anything away from either of the characters because they were both done masterfully by great actors. But I just felt like they were they were written very similar. And even to the point and uh, even to the point with the uh, quote unquote plot twist, um, you know, him being him being a uh, vulture being. Uh, Peter's crush's was, dad is, was the same as Green Goblin being his best friend's dad in the first one. And even the scene in the car where he's putting where where Vulture is putting it all together, that this kid in his backseat is Spider-Man. That was exactly the same as the Thanksgiving dinner where uh, Green Goblin was putting it together that Peter was Spider-Man. There's just there were a lot of similarities there. And uh, and I, I found that was was a little disappointing because I was like, well, I wish they'd have been a little more original. Not that it doesn't work in this movie, but I'd seen that before. Um, I really didn't like Zendaya's character. Oh, God, I hated her. She was pointless. Like her whole thing in the movie was just to pop up every so often and have all the characters look at her and be like, why are you here? And I thought the same thing watching the movie. I was like, why are you here in this movie? Why are you here? There's no reason for you. Go away. You're not moving the plot forward. You're not helping to develop any of the characters. You're just fucking popping up to say a one-liner. It's annoying. Go away. And then the, uh, the whole MJ thing at the end, that really pissed me off too, because that was the same thing that they did in the Dark Knight Rises yes. with Joseph Gordon Levitt's character. It was exactly the same thing. You know, we're gonna we're gonna spend this whole movie with this character that we've told you a million times is not Robin, is not Mary Jane, and then at the end, oh guess what? He's secretly Robin or secretly Mary Jane, and it was fucking retarded. Um it, it was just it was really dumb. I hated everything about her character. And then that's really the those are really the biggest problems that I had with it. I mean, it was a good movie as a whole. Um, and it, I mean, if you want to call those nitpicks, I mean, I won't disagree with you, but those those are the biggest problems that I had with it. Some of the humor was forced and juvenile. Like, I know it's high school, but it just seemed like it reminded me that this movie is uh, two of the guys that wrote this movie wrote vacation which is abysmal uh don't ever watch it <laughs> then i thought i thought the basis for michael Keane's character that was a little cliche but once we got past that it didn't really play a factor in anything i loved zendaya's character i thought she was great she could have been really annoying because of a cow like oh look how edgy she is but i thought it worked really well but yeah that name drop was like okay yeah you know, you're just throwing it in i did have one that i forgot and it wasn't really it's not really an issue it's just a mild annoyance you remember about a week ago when they released the cast pick the you know forest hills 90210 picture and there was Damn. this blonde girl that we we're like who is that well she looks like gwen stacy well okay one, right one she was a completely pointless character not that i have a problem with her being there as background but it's like they said, hey, let's take this completely consequential character, dress her up exactly like a major Spider-Man character, and then give her the name of another major Spider-Man character. Yeah. I thought that was that was annoying. I when who I, when I saw Grant? who she was, I Elizabeth was just Banks. like, oh my god, that's so dumb. Elizabeth Banks but, in the first uh, in the Raimi films, still. Yeah, she Betty Brant is oh, J. Okay. Jonah Jameson's secretary. Oh, okay, that's cool. I kind of like. Yes. And in the comic books, in the comic books, he was Peter Parker. She was Peter Parker's first love interest. And they made a big, a rather big deal about, you know, him dating an older woman because he was like 15, 16 years old. And she was like, you know, 21. For me, my main negatives for the stuff that bothered me the least 
Uh, I think some of the editing is kind of weird in places, especially at the beginning when uh, when Vulture is doing his his little his thing, his little thing, and then it and it cuts to the the Marvel the Marvel logo. I thought it was really abrupt, and I was like, you could have done that better. But uh, and I think there's a few places in there where they cut. There will be a scene. There's a specific scene that I'm thinking of that I can't I can't really uh, put my finger on it. But there will be a scene where someone will be talking to like Peter or someone or someone will be having a conversation and uh, they'll get done talking and it looks like they're about to say something else, but then they cut to another scene. And it was just, it was just really weird for me. I don't know if any, probably no one else noticed that, but that was just me. But, and then another thing, I, I was not one of the people that hated on this cast that just that was like, this is the worst thing ever. This is fucking horrible. Oh, it's, this is this is awful, stupid, uh, race swapping, whatever. But I hated Flash Thompson. <laughs> I really did not like Flash Thompson. Um, I didn't I mean, have a problem with Flash. I mean, he was he, he was more of a of a douchey kind of a bully than a, a jock kind of a bully. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't have a problem with him. He was a spoiled rich kid who was a douche. I I, I like seeing he, Peter Parker. He was reminiscent of like '80s movie villains, which I thought that that's what they were going for. So I thought it worked. I just or I '80s movies, really, high school villains. I don't know. I just I couldn't really buy him as as like a pop as like a popular bully i just i i don't know i couldn't he he seemed like more of the more of the kid that would get bullied in high school rather than uh the dylan incurs his boy bullying by the way i'm i'm just explaining my point <laughs> but yeah i i don't know i just he it, it was kind of it was just weird and i i Again, I was not one of those people that thought this was awful casting. I, I thought it was great casting. Like I couldn't wait to see him. Uh, and the score, I hated the score. Uh, fuck you, Mike Giacchino. Um, he just re- he just reused the same fucking song over and over again in the movie, and I hated it. I was just like, this is bad. This is not good. Uh, and then I think the CGI <laughs> is bad in places you can i think there's some shots where you can really tell tell that the suit is cgi and it's kind of weird um and then the the main thing this is i said this on twitter uh, i said that spider-man homecoming does what is possibly the dumbest thing i have seen in a comic book movie this year and that is dylan you're forgetting about x24 shut the fuck up Michelle being or them calling her MJ, what, what, whatever, whoever she is, I hated whatever. the MJ thing. I thought that was so forced. It was so stupid. It did not have to happen, and I, I hated it. Um, and it's just like she's not. I don't. It's like she's not MJ, but she is MJ. Like she's not Mary Jane, but she's MJ. I. She's, she's like their this, version of it. Yeah, Mary Jane and or whatever. I, just, I like Michelle being her own character. She doesn't have to be someone. She can just be. She can just be her own character. And I actually liked Michelle, unlike Will, who hated her. I actually liked her. And then that just that that Mary Jane thing or MJ thing just pissed me off. But Will, what did you think of the new suit at the end? I loved it. I wanted to see Peter put it on. I wanted to see him put it on and go out and fucking have a press conference. And because here's the thing. All right. I get what they were trying to do with that. They were trying to give Peter an arc where through the whole movie, all he wants is to be an Avenger. And then he realizes that he can do more good in the community than as an Avenger. But that's all going to be thrown away when we see Spider-Man as an Avenger in Infinity War. Well, that's different. So, but it's, but it's not though, because like they're they're gonna have. He's a super powered character that helps to help out with the character taking over the world. Yeah, it's different. I mean, it depends on how they do it, but I just felt like, I mean, I just felt like it's something that that is gonna end up being wasted. It's gonna be a character development that's gonna end up being wasted. Um, but I like that suit. I really did. I thought like when uh, when they unveiled it. 
uh, my wife looked over at me because I had said out loud, I was like, holy shit. Because, I mean, it's just really fucking cool. I loved it. I wanted to see him put it on. Now, Miller, I know you have you have different thoughts on this. What did you think? Uh, I It looked plasticky. It didn't look that great, but I it it'll pro- it would probably look better on him, which we didn't see that obviously. So I mean he'll wear it he'll probably wear it in Infinity War at some point. So we'll see then. Were you surprised, Will, by Pepper showing up at the end? I was. Um, she got fourth billing because she demanded it. Really, for like a three second cameo? Gwyneth Paltrow, man. <laughs> but um. I mean, I kind of was because I thought that after uh, Iron Man 3, I honestly felt like she was done with these movies. And with uh, the way they kind of wrote her off in Civil War, uh, I didn't think she would be back. But, I mean, I was glad to see her. I really love how those two characters play off of each other. Yeah, Yeah. I really liked seeing her again, too. What about uh, the reveal at the end that I guess... guess, uh, Scorpion is going to be the villain of Homecoming Two or whatever it'll be titled. That's another. That's another thing that uh, I, I still feel like Sony is trying to like backdoor their Sinister Six movie. Um, because so, have, Sony has nothing to like. They would not. They would not. Marvel would not be letting them do that, though. I don't know. I I, I don't know. But um, I just, that's the vibe that I got with them introducing this this character, this Scorpion character, who you saw for three seconds uh, on the Staten Island ferry, and then um, and then you see him in that post credit scene. To be honest, I would have liked to have seen in that post credit scene instead of the Scorpion. I would have liked to have seen that be the Kingpin, because. Even if they never do anything with Kingpin in a Spider-Man movie, it would have been a nice nod to the fans because Kingpin was originally a Spider-Man villain. Um, You know, it was Frank Miller that went to Marvel and said, hey, can I steal Kingpin from Spider-Man and give him to Daredevil? So he was originally a Spider-Man villain, and he was a major character in the Spider-Man animated series in the 90s. So I just thought I just thought that. I thought that Kingpin would have been a, a, a better guy for him to run into in prison. I mean, yeah. um, well, if you put Kingpin in the after credit scene, that just raises a whole lot of questions that they don't want. I mean, and it also, I mean, it also like uh, unofficially, I guess, ties in the Netflix stuff to the movie stuff, which they don't again, do that. I mean, continuity, I guess, is kind of iffy on that. Um, because, I mean, Joss Whedon has said, as far as he's concerned, Phil Coulson is dead in the <laughs> movies. And, I mean, like it's, like it's like the movies have to, or the TV shows have to take their cues from the movies, but the movies don't really have to take their cues from the show, from the shows. So, but I mean, I don't know. I just, I really would have liked to have seen that. As soon as I saw that scene, I was like, that should have been Kingpin. But, I mean, that's just me. That would have made, that would have been crazy. I mean, yeah, I would have preferred Kingpin, screen. but I wasn't thinking it was going to be Kingpin because I know that's not going to happen. I mean, I Kingpin, that would have been fucking amazing, but it's like, I, I also kind of don't, I, I want to see Kingpin in one of the movies, but I don't want to see him as a main villain for Spider-Man. No. Because it would be the same thing as Dare, Daredevil season one. So, I mean, not I, really, just because, uh, I mean, Spider-Man and Daredevil are completely different characters. No, but, I mean, you're right. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily need to see Kingpin as the villain in a Spider-Man movie. That just, that, that for me would have been one instance where that would have been fan service done well, as opposed to fan service done badly. But, but you can't just I put Kingpin in the know. movie and then fans aren't going to be like, these fans are just going to be like, I want to see him in the movie now. Or another movie. Yeah. But I do think, though, Michael Mando as Scorpion, that's fucking perfect. That's that's great. Yeah, that's good um, casting. He's not uh, Carnage, yeah, I, surprisingly I, enough. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think about the Iron Man stuff that was put in his in his suit? Um, I mean, he's got his own Jarvis now. Uh, First of all, Karen he, is better than Jarvis. I'm going to say that. Yeah, Karen was great. 
you know, all the onboard computers and stuff. I mean, I get, I get it. Tony Stark built that suit. So he would have put a bunch of Iron Man tech in it, Mm -hmm. but also at the same time, that's not Spider-Man. That's Iron Man. I get that, but I also think it worked in its own right. I thought it was fine. I did really like that, that Peter was getting his ass kicked every time he turned around. I liked that. Yeah. That was something at the beginning in the earlier Spider-Man comic books he used to get his ass kicked a lot because he was a stupid kid who was in way over his head. And I, and you've never really seen that in these movies before. You know, you get one uh, training montage where he learns to use his powers. And then after that, he's, you know, he, he's, he's perfect. He's until the, ass. Until, yeah, he's perfect until the main villain. Shows yeah. Up and and, uh, and I like that he was getting his ass kicked all the time. I liked that he botched the. Uh, the, the bank robbery with the the Avengers, uh, you know, the quote-unquote mm-hmm. Avengers. Yeah. I like that he botched that. I like that he screws up. I like that he's, you know, just really bad at his job because he, he's new at it. Yeah, this is like a movie that's very – because it has a lot, and this is credit to how John Watts handles it and how it's written. It has a lot going on, but they make it feel simplistic. But not like underwhelming at the same time. The, the good thing about this movie, there's not into the world stakes or anything. Yeah, and but I think John Watts was still able to make it feel very grand. Well, and, while and there's not even to be honest, there's not even end of the city stakes. The, yeah. Uh, I mean, he he literally saved like maybe a, a four or five block uh, stretch of the city from being crushed by that airplane, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it, and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like too much. And the Vulture, I, I mean, I love Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton as the Vulture, even though John Malkovich is still my Vulture. But um, John yes. Malkovich isn't anybody's Vulture. <laughs> He's he going to be Vulture, and you don't know that though. <laughs> he would have been. That's this perfect man, but. Michael Keaton is uh, great as Vulture, and I think he, he's. I think he's. The th- either the third or the second M- best MCU villain. I go back and forth whether he's. I, li- I like them more than yeah. I say Loki and I might be forgetting some people, but I say Loki well, and both. Are we counting? Favorite. Are we counting uh, the Netflix stuff as MCU for this best villain thing? Sure, well, because sure. if we're counting, if we're counting that, then Kingpin is definitely the best MCU villain. I like them better than Kingpin. Um, but I did like Michael Keaton and he's one of the few villains in the MCU that actually you get his motivation. You know, he's not, he's not trying to take over the world. He's not trying to, you know, do any of that nonsense. He had his livelihood taken away from him. So he found a new livelihood and that was, you know, selling extraterrestrial guns to, to criminals. Um, but it was a very identifiable thing. You know, and it was kind of he's not really a sympathetic villain because he really is a son of a bitch. And I think that's what really makes the character good was Michael Keaton pulled that off. Like when he turns to Peter and he says, if you get in my way again, I will kill you and everyone that you love. Like that is a chilling fucking statement. And he said it very matter of factly without any emotion at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was just haunting. And and he was definitely, I think the most sinister MCU villain. Um, But I like that they gave him some motivation that actually kind of makes some sense because Loki never, his motivation doesn't make any sense to me. Um, You know, uh, none of these, um, except maybe uh, Baron Zemo is the only one that actually had a motivation that you can actually understand. And identify. Zemo is my favorite MCU villain, but I I think, Vulture's probably probably my second. I probably like him more than Loki. It's just like Loki, Tom Hiddleston just brings so much charisma to that role that it's like you can't really help but like him. But well, and and Tom Hiddleston's great, and it's not his fault that I feel that Loki is lacking as a character. It's because he hasn't been developed right. I think this is. I think it's my it's my third favorite Spider-Man movie. I it's my second. Spider-Man, Spider-Man One is my favorite. Spider-Man Two, is a Spider-Man movie, and then Spider-Man Two is obviously second. But uh, and I think it's probably my fourth 
favorite MCU movie behind Cap the t- behind Iron Man, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Civil War, but um, but yeah, great movie. Looking forward to seeing it again. People are complaining that that shot of uh, Iron Man flying and Spider-Man swinging care. together are, is not in the movie. Like I I didn't care either. But it's also like I don't know if it's not the same thing or anything, but. People are complaining, oh, there's going to be too much Iron Man in this movie. And then you're complaining when that shot isn't in it. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, I, I didn't have a problem with the shot not being in it, but I was looking for it. Because that was a really cool well, of course, shot. Yeah, of course you're looking for it. But, I'm like, but yeah, I, I wasn't, like, d- disappointed that it wasn't in there. I was just like, oh, okay, I guess they're I'm curious they're to see where they, where they put it, though. Well, I thought from the trailers, I was expecting it to be after the Staten Island uh, ferry scene, because wasn't it over water? Yeah, but he was getting his suit taken away after that. Well, that's true, but they could have been on their way to the bridge where he takes the suit away. Hey, Peter, you want to uh, take a take a ride with me? Sure, where are we going? Oh, nowhere. We're going to fire your ass, bitch. <laughs> Well, do do you think that that was just that was just a shot simply for the trailer, or did that it could have been? But it seems it seems ex, it seems expensive to put in the trailer, but they did cut it, so I'm not sure. I will say I did like uh, the amount of Iron Man in this movie and the function of Iron Man in the movie. Yeah, you know he didn't take it over, but he did. His shadow was always looming over Peter. And uh, and I like the the thing with uh, the first time he saves Peter and chastises him, and he's not even in the suit. Like he sent the suit yeah, that was on uh, autopilot to go rescue him. I liked that, and I really really love John Favreau in this movie. Yes. Yeah, I liked him. I heard a lot of people complaining about him in this movie, but uh, I no, really fuck them. Him. Those people are retarded because John Favreau is Jesus. great. He's not just great in this movie. He's great in every movie. He's the highlight of the Daredevil movie. Yeah, John Batman. Oh, yeah, he's definitely the best Foggy Nelson. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go write that. Cool, ar- I'm going to go write that article now. Foggy Nelson's ranked. <laughs> all both of them? Yeah, two, all two. That'd be cool if, if John if John Favreau directed Homecoming 2. I'd kind of be into that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you leave a like and tell us your thoughts about on Spider-Man Homecoming in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all of our other videos. Check out our website, TillTheLastCredit.com. Follow us on Twitter at TillTheLastCred. <sighs> and follow, like us on Facebook at TillTheLastCred. And follow us on Instagram at TillTheLastCred. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.